Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Knox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? Before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel as it helps immensely. Thank you. This one is called Creepy DM Fetishizes Me. Oh boy. So this is my first ever Reddit post and I was inspired to talk about this thanks to Crit Crab and channels similar. Welcome. Unfortunately for the circumstances, I guess, but welcome nonetheless. I hope I'm doing this correctly. For some context, one. I'm a minor, but technically legal in my state. Despite this, I'm still very uncomfortable with sexual themes involving adults due to past stuff. Two, I'm trans. This shouldn't matter, but it does for this story. I am FTM and have been out for years and pass pretty well. On to the story. So I play at a local game shop and have been doing so for years now. It's a ton of fun despite the drama I'm thrust into. I'm the only minor there and everybody knows this, or so I thought. I had known this DM briefly from a cyberpunk game where he was really chill. I played for a bit before switching back to D&D and he was super cool about it. So I thought nothing bad of this guy when he wanted me to play in a new D&D campaign. To the party, I brought my favorite D&D character I ever made, Judas, my Cthulhu warlock. Well, that sounds interesting. The problem started before the game even started. It was Pride Month when this happened, so when I arrived, this DM wished me a happy Pride. I was super thankful, and this sparked a conversation of everybody at the table's sexuality. Seems mildly inappropriate. Me and another person talked about being trans before my DM piped up. Oh, I'm bisexual, but I only like feminine guys like you and pirate. Immediate red flag. This is why you don't talk about sexual things with minors. It's just not appropriate. Me and Pirate were the only trans guys at this store. I knew immediately what he meant, but I had no guts to pipe up and say, Hey, that's a kind of fetishization, dude. We continued with the game anyway, our numbers slowly dwindling down to just two players. This is when DM started to get weird. It was a joke that my warlock and Cthulhu had a sexual thing. It just a joke, mind you. Again, you shouldn't joke about... There should be zero discussion of sexual things with minors, unless it's in an educational setting where you're learning about reproduction and safety and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, it's just completely inappropriate. Like, come on now. <sighs> that I never gave consent to playing out or even talking about seriously. You shouldn't joke about it either. This creep took this as his chance to make so many sexual jokes to me, including feet fetishes, nudes, my character sent to Cthulhu, and the likes. Yes, this DM is a weirdo. I was uncomfortable and didn't know what to do, so I continued to play my character, completely detaching myself. That's the only way I could get through that game. <sighs> I get it. As an adolescent, you're going to have things going on. You'll probably talk with your other peers. You could have conversations with... Uh, again, like I said, in, in an educational setting, I, I, it's obviously appropriate because you need to learn about these things, how humans work. But just discussions like that with adults, especially uh, strangers from a, a place you play board games at, it's just, it's so inappropriate. And the DM should have known better. And obviously it's just, oh, this is just getting awkward. Anyways, okay. We ended up finishing early, so I took the time to calm down. This DM sat right next to me and I couldn't move away as I'm a wheelchair user and was in a corner. Oh my goodness, this is just getting worse. He continued to ask, so how old are you, OP? I replied with my age, bad idea, and that I turn 18 in a few months. This creepy ass clown replied with, oh really, that's not that long, in the most interested and creepy manner he could. I'm sorry that you were put in this position. I, I'm, honestly, it's just... Oh my goodness. I hope you report this guy, please. I was at the mercy of time, sadly, and I can't drive, and my ride would be a bit longer. Luckily, I managed to fend him off by putting my earbuds in and giving him the most dry responses I could. When I did leave, the two people I considered my second parents, Pirate and Centaur, both of these names are based off some of their past characters, by the way, noticed I was acting strange. I proceeded to text Pirate and with everything that happened. The one person who I thought would comfort me and help me proceeded to make excuses for DM. It's fine. He's just socially awkward. Let it go. It's fine. It is not fine. And I'm sorry again you're dealing with these people. This made me feel worse, and I proceeded to lose two of my closest friends and my security at a place I truly loved. Yes, that is terribly unfortunate, and 
could be a bit traumatizing, honestly. It's been a few months now and I'm still at a crossroads of whether or not I should tell my other friends what happened. I'm not looking for anybody to tell me this wasn't creepy and predatory. I'm looking for advice on whether or not to tell others and to warn people like me that this is not normal and shouldn't be taken as such. Sorry if formatting is off. I've had holes of phone-made posts being horribly formatted. You're fine. Oh, there's an edit. Let's see what happened. Edit. Again, I do not want my experience invalidated by people on Reddit. Some of my comments give more clarification, and I'm sorry I didn't give much in the post. This situation in general makes me panic and not think correctly. I've spoken to my mental health care team, and all of them have agreed that this was not okay. It's, it was not. Uh, no. I trust trained professionals more than some random Redditors. The intention of my sharing of this story is to ask for advice on how to proceed telling others and to warn people that behavior such as this is not okay. Okay. And not that it should matter, but I am not paralyzed. I'm in a wheelchair due to medical conditions, hence why I cannot drink or drive. It's illegal for me to drive and dangerous for me to drink. Obviously, yes, you're... I wouldn't say you're on the wrong, obviously, okay? I mean, one, when you're around adults, adults have the responsibility to act appropriately. It's on them. A child obviously shouldn't do certain things, but in this case, I don't think you've done any of that. So, and again, you're, probably, you're not a child, but as a minor still. An adult has a responsibility to be accountable and to understand that if they're going to play in an environment like that, to keep it professional and appropriate. Obviously, what occurred was not professional, it was not appropriate, and it was actually deviant and disgusting. Um, I feel like they were taking advantage of you, they were trying to take advantage of the situation, and you unfortunately were a victim of that circumstance. So, I agree with whoever you're talking to, the medical professional, that it was not okay, it was not appropriate. And to have the person you thought you could trust to protect you in a situation invalidate what occurred is horrendous, obviously. <sighs> I do, I feel you should talk to your friends about it. Um... It could go a few ways. One, they're going to be on your side, and then you either don't go there anymore, or they correct the situation, highly unlikely. Or they don't take your side and blame you for it, and then you're even more traumatized. So, obviously, it's quite the predicament. I'm not sure, actually. You listening, what would you do in this situation? I'm curious, because I feel like every time I have an opinion on these matters, I tend to cause a lot of emotional flair in the comment section, and I get people from both sides getting either agreeing with me or just flaming me. <laughs> Understandably, it's a very uh, emotional topic. But I'm curious, let me know in the comments, how would you handle this? Our next story is called, Players throw their toys out of the cot because I won't let them roll in secret. Well, that's, this sounds a bit different than normal, let's see what happens. A very brief haul story that happened to me recently, because most of the stories on the subreddit are way longer than they need to be. I responded to a group looking for a DM on Discord. This all happened before we could even get to a session zero. Player A mentions that he's going to use physical dice, because he doesn't trust roll 20 dice rolls. He doesn't ask me specifically, just says this is what he's going to do. I say no thanks, we're using roll 20, so we're all going to use the roll 20 dice. Player A flips out says he always uses physical dice and that this is a question of trust. Firstly, I tell him, I just met these people 10 minutes ago. Why on earth would I trust a random stranger to tell me what they rolled? Secondly, it's really more of a question of convenience than a question of trust. If everyone uses roll 20, all the rolls are in the same place. Play A says they will use D&D Beyond for dice rolls instead. No, I say that's basically the same thing as using physical dice. Everyone uses roll 20. Player A keeps at it. They insist they can't be forced to use the Roll20 dice, even though we'd all agreed we would be using Roll20 for VTT. This dude must have some kind of irrational distrust of the Roll20 dice system that they just won't explain, and I'm not really interested in going into it. I repeat for the third time. It's the same rules for everyone. We all use Roll20 for dice. Even you? says player A, how do we know the DM isn't faking the dice rolls? For one thing, that's obviously not the same thing, but I don't really want to get into the DM's right to fudge a dice roll. So, yes, I tell him, of course, I'll be using roll 20. I never fudge dice rolls. Then player B pipes up. 
Actually, is it alright if I use physical dice too? I'll use a webcam so you can see my rolls. At this point, I'm facepalming pretty hard. There are two of them now, and I really do not want to be policing people's webcams while I play. So I insist for the fourth and final time, can we please just all roll in one place? There is radio silence for a few hours, and then I get a private message from both A and B. Sorry, we're gonna have to pull out of this game. Some of your homebrew rules are kind of red flags for us. Thanks anyways. Yes, they called it homebrew rules. The homebrew rule of insisting they all use the same VTT for dice rolls. This was literally the only rule we discussed. Needless to say, session zero never happened. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think the webcam solution was a legitimate solution, but I also understand you not wanting to police a webcam and constantly have to, no, let me see, I didn't see him yet, because that could be extremely time consuming. It is what it is. If you're going to play online, expect to use online dice because people do lie or they they might be in a situation where they might not normally lie, but they're in such a high stakes moment that they just can't stand to see like a, a very low number. So it makes sense to use virtual dice and the DM should as well because, well, I don't know, I guess uh, because DMs do mess around too. I can't. You, I, think, I feel like you kind of played it off like, no, I'm a DM that would never do that. <laughs> then why should they trust you with the same logic if they've only met you 10 minutes ago, right? You know. But anyways, I, I, I don't think what you did was unreasonable. And them pulling out is just them pulling out. You know, it is what it is. They wanted to play a certain way. You wanted to play another way. I'm actually glad that it ended right there before it went anywhere. So, yes, it seems like a waste of time to have gotten into that. But, hey. It could have been much worse if you continued and then dealt with this stuff later. Anyways, that is all of our tales for today. If you'd like to hear more, come back and I shall tell you some.